Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning for our peer-to-peer uh, -peer virtual conference. We are so excited to bring this to you today, and we're really happy to report that over 500 of you have registered for the various sessions during uh, our schedule today for the peer-to-peer -peer world virtual conference. Uh, my name is Andy Welkley. I am the product marketing manager at Blackboard for peer-to-peer -peer solutions, and we really appreciate uh, Devin Twyman and Sally Riddle kicking us off today with their session on Hold the Phone, How to Leverage Mobile to Build Your Brand, Community, and Awareness. They're uh, two of our presenters today, but we're really excited to share with you uh, insights from companies like Analytical Ones, Armbruster Consulting Group, Cathexis Partners, Small World Labs, and of course, Devin um, and her company, Raise More. Uh, during the session, we want to make it as interactive as possible. Obviously, Devin and Sally are going to share some great insight and information, but we also want to hear from you. So please feel free to use the Q&A feature on your console today to submit questions. Uh, in the, and I will be moderating those questions and posing them to Devin and Sally at the end of their presentation today. Uh, we will be recording this session. Uh, there's going to be a lot of great information here that you may want to go back to or forward to a peer or colleague uh, who might really find this valuable and may have been unable to attend today. So please sit back, get ready for a fun day with lots of great content. And with that, Devin, Sally, I'll turn it over to you. All right. Thanks, Andy. Um, we are here today in Dallas, Texas. So Sally and I are, we decided to huddle together uh, down in Dallas where, where Carry the Load is actually headquartered. Um, so thanks for joining us today. So I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Devin Foyman. I'm co-founder CEO of Raise More. And then I have the lovely lady, Sally Riddle. Thanks. Um, I have been working uh, from, at Carry the Load from the beginning. And uh, uh, we've been around for almost six years now. And I've been the database admin and basically the IT department for Carry the Load load for the whole time and just doing jack of all trades, whatever needs to be done kind of thing. So Sally, tell us a little bit more about Carry the Load, um, the mission, how it got started, and everything like that for our listeners today. Well, the way it began is there were two Navy SEALs who felt like their friends, their fallen comrades were not, were being forgotten and were not being honored and remembered on Memorial Day. And so they really just got in mind that they wanted to um, get the entire United States to observe Memorial Day in a special way. And so Carry the Load provides an active way to observe the day and to reflect on the meaning of Memorial Day. And um, a lot of people, when they um, join Carry the Load, they're carrying a... Um, a person or people who have sacrificed for them, and so it's a symbolic way to honor the fallen. Yeah, so back to your point, someone carrying someone, you know, some of the pictures that we have on the screen, you know, this little boy um, carrying his dad on his t-shirt is something that I can recall on my journey when I was uh, up on the relay on the um, East Coast. So. Tell us a little bit about how your map looks a little different this year. It really is. Um, we've just been growing and growing like crazy, and we started just with one small walk in Dallas five years ago and um, added a few places along the way of something to happen on Memorial Day. And then we added the East Coast Relay that started first at West Point and came to Dallas all through the month of May. And then this year, brand new, we just kicked off yesterday the West Coast Relay, and it started in Seattle. And will they will bike and walk all the way to Dallas, and everybody meets in Dallas on the day before Memorial Day. We walk all night on the Sunday, and then we finish up on Monday. So this is a busy time. Yeah, very busy yeah. time. That's for sure. <laughs> Um, so, just a little bit about Raise More for people that have maybe never heard of us. Uh, Raise More actually provides a custom mobile application for your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising event. 
Um, something that we do is any nonprofit, no matter how big or small they are, or even how big their events are, you can come to our website and build your own custom mobile application, try it out, um, be able to preview it and everything like that before you even purchase. Um, and then at the end of the day, uh, we allow you to see um, data in our dashboard and being able to turn on and off different events you would like in your mobile application. So Sally, um, you know, you were a guest on our Raise More Now podcast not too long ago, and you had mentioned something that I thought goes kind of one-on-one -on, -one on this um, presentation that we have today. So you said something, the tune of build right for your mission and the followers will, will come. So kind of talk to us a little bit about how you guys have built right for your mission, uh, since you've definitely um, helped build, carry the load from the ground up. Okay, well, when the mission is primarily about getting people to do something, to observe a day, it's a lot about awareness and not the, the initial mission isn't raising money for something. So our whole um, mission to put out the word, to get people to do something on Memorial Day came with, once we started it, a willingness for people to want to give. So it's almost backwards from a lot of the, a lot of um, nonprofits, but their willingness to there's a willingness to jump in and jump on board to honor those who've sacrificed us, especially um, in the United States when we one percent of people who are of, in the United States who are currently serving in our military. So there's a lot of people who know that there's a small number of people that are sacrificing for their freedoms. And so it's easy to jump on board and honor those people and to um, just observe that Memorial Day and in remembering the, the fallen and the families of the fallen. And so um, we have a group of nonprofits that we choose and we give the money that's raised is to those nonprofits, and that's another thing that for our and um, the people who support us, that's what they really can jump on board with is the money going to organizations that are doing boots on the ground type of work for veterans, families of the fallen, and uh, first responders. Well, that's great. So um, let's briefly talk about some of the wins. So kind of going back to. Um, you know, carry the load and everything like that, uh, back from 2011 to, uh, I know the results on the screen right here is to 2015, kind of walk us through, um, you know, some of your successes and then even some, some goals that you have for this year. Okay. We um, have had some real, um, really great uh, corporate sponsors come on board as well as just hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of people who just said, I want to be a part of this in some way. And of course, we want them to uh, register to participate. And we don't require fundraising, but it's amazing that people have really just stepped up to the plate. We have raised over $6.4 million in the last five years. And um, we gifted out to our nonprofit partners 3.4 million of that. And um, the corporate sponsorship that we take in goes to pay for all of our um, events and all of our um, admin costs so that we can put as much as the public raises out to our nonprofit partners. We do want to increase of course, our number of registered participants. The number that we see there is a conglomerate number, but we are looking to hopefully uh, do a 150% uh, increase from last year in terms of just registered participants. And part of the way that's happening is we have 32 distinct events that are happening on Memorial Day and throughout the month of May. Um, and part of April, we can see one started yesterday. And so I think just increasing the number of events is going to get us more registered participants. And then the way we count attendees is we have people who just come out, whether they're registered or not, they come out and support us and we try to estimate 
how many of those people are, are supporting us just through being there and observing the day. Um, of course, we push um, teams. And uh, we know, and I'm sure everybody on this call understands about how important teams are in peer-to-peer -peer and just the competition that goes along with it, as well as the camaraderie. And so that is a big part of what we do. We try to honor our team captains. And uh, our goal this year for the fundraising that we want to uh, raise this year from peer-to-peer -peer is $2.5 million. So that's a slight increase over last year. And I think we're right on track to make it this year. That's awesome. That's awesome. And you've definitely expanded the number of relays. We have the two relays, and they are um, rallies. I mean. Sorry. Yeah, we, you have the two relays, and now we have over uh, 30 re rallies throughout. And those are just people getting together to walk or do a run or whatever they're going to do and um, just observe the day in a special way. Yeah, and some of those came about through your do-it-yourself, uh, kind of carry it home. A lot of those kind of were initially from there that then grew into an actual rally. Is that right? Yeah, we had um, several people saying, why isn't there an event in my city? And I'm sure a lot of people on this call understand what that's like. You can't just jump up and create an event anytime you want to. So what we did is we created a DIY um, page and um, allowed people to just start a team and say wherever your team is, name your team, the place where you are, and invite people to join your team and that will be your event. That's your do it DIY event and we call it Carry It Home. And then we're in communication with the team captains on the Carry It Home to see if they will think about having an actual full-scale rally in their city the next year. So most of our rally cities have come, have grown up from either a carry at home or they're a, a sponsored by one of our sponsors. Great. So with wins that you just uh, were able to talk about, there is always the challenges that come. So kind of uh, talk to us a little bit about the challenges that you've experienced, even maybe some challenges that you continue to experience. This will really um, play a part into our mobile strategy discussion. Okay. One of the things about having so many events happening at exactly the same time, it's very difficult to keep everything straight, not only within our own office, but even in the public and on the website. And so we try to um, get people to understand what, what's the difference between a rally and a relay and the carry at home, and, it's, and there's just so much to it. And there is a little bit of um, lack of understanding of what even peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is. It seems like when we started, a lot of our constituents were not your typical walk constituents. And so they had to sort of be educated on what the whole point of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising was and what is a team and how it all works. So, in general, our conversion rate from somebody being a participant to being a fundraiser is about a year. It takes them a year to really fully understand what's going on. And we'd love to get it down to where they do both in one year, where they become a participant and a fundraiser. And so part of using the mobile app is just to increase, number one, that education, and just the speed of the education, and to get that conversion rate much much higher, and then also to um, be able to make it easy for them to do the fundraising so that it's not a huge barrier. We have um, constituents that do not want to um, necessarily um, give all of their information to the fundraising platform that we're using, and so um, the mobile app is helpful with that. We also have a, one of our biggest sponsors, they have, I would say they have probably 40 teams right now. Their company, does, their company Firewall does not allow them to access our website. So we have a lot of people who just can't even get to our website while they're at work. And so the mobile app helps them do that because they don't have to worry about the firewall while they're using the mobile app. And then there's 
as everybody on, sh on here knows, I'm sure, there's a balance between data collection and ease of use. And so you're always going back and forth of how can I make things easier, but still get the data that I need. And so that's another thing the mobile app helps us with. We can get the data without having to, um, uh, I guess you'd say, bother the user as much. And they don't have to um, offer up their contact uh, within, the, um, within the website and just use their own contacts from their phone. I think we're going to talk about that a little bit later, too. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things that I know you had mentioned several times uh, that people, you know, are leery of uploading some contacts to an unknown source. And so having a mobile application uh, that they're used to going to their contacts and everything like that uh, kind of yeah, it eliminates, the, it eliminates the barrier and lets them feel free to just use their, their phone contact, whether it's email or, or phone numbers. Um, because the mobile app, of course, lets you text and email and, of course, use your social media. And the nice thing is it just automatically creates the link so that you can easily share your fundraising page and your donation page. Yeah, perfect. Well, now let's kind of get into why does mobile even matter? Um, so, you know, I think one of the things here is I could talk um, probably all afternoon about mobile data and where mobile's going and everything like that. Um, I think really for today's conversation, I want to focus around how versus why. How should you prepare for a mobile strategy? especially since it's 2016. So uh, for anyone that really wants some data, I'll give you some data facts here. Um, you know, 64% um, of U.S. mobile users check their phone within 15 minutes of getting out of bed and then going to bed. So we kind of live and breathe uh, that mobile device that we have uh, hooked to us at all times. The other um, kind of interesting fact, I think, um, as we all use our mobile device, um, I'm sure we've all done online uh, shopping before. So just last year, 2015, 50, 56% increase on US sales um, via the mobile device, where on desktop, um, it was only 8%. And then kind of looking as opposed to a mobile application and then mobile web, the amount of time someone spends, um, you know, mobile applications three hours, where someone will really spend a lot of time there. Uh, Facebook is probably taking a lot of credit there. Um, but then mobile web is 51 minutes. So again, uh, we're not going to really spend a lot of time on why you should possibly have a mobile strategy. We are going to spend the majority of our time talking about how. So one thing that I did want to kind of mention, um, I think understanding, you know, how do you even start? Where do you start with a mobile strategy? Um, I'm on the screen here. Uh, I have a quote here from Fred Wilson. Uh, Fred Wilson is someone that I would consider I probably stalk on the interweb a little bit. Um, he definitely understands the world of technology. Uh, at the bottom of the screen here, he is obviously a venture capitalist and blogger. I'd recommend following him if you want to keep in the know um, about some, where technology is actually going. So he's actually betted on a lot of smart, smart folks. Uh, you know, I'm sure you've heard of Etsy, Twitter, Kickstarter before. Um, but the reason why I wanted to kind of bring Fred Wilson into this conversation is this analogy that he has. Uh, going back to retail, online shopping, I think one of the key things he mentions here is the mobile web is the window of your store. So as you're thinking of your website, think of your website as being the entry point to your store. I think the other thing here is users um, will come to window shop, right? They're going to come. So once they hear about Carry the Load or any other organization, they're going to either 
Google. They've heard something on the radio or they've seen something on Facebook. They're going to click on it. It's going to take you to your your window shopping page, right? Um, you want to make sure that's responsive. You definitely want to make sure that they have a good entry point and understanding about your organization. Um, I think the other thing here is, is then getting them to convert from just a window shopper to actually a long-term um, you know, participant, if you want to call that. Um, that's really where uh, getting them to download and install an application, that's where you're building that long-term relationship with them. Um, and the key thing there is if they know what they're going to get at the end of the day of downloading your mobile application, they will. Um, you know, they really want to understand, is this reliable? What am I going to get? How is this going to help me at the end of the day? So, again, I just really wanted to kind of talk about the retail perspective of um, thinking through a mobile strategy and how you would actually start that there. So, I'll continue on. Um, the other thing about when you do start a mobile strategy, it's always about, okay, um, what applications do I use on a daily basis? So we actually did a poll here at Raise More um, and basically asked the question, um, what three apps do you use on a daily basis? Um, calendar to do applications were top on the list, Black. Um, that's something that we use here at Raise More. We'll talk about that in a little bit more. Um, and then obviously social media, Instagram. So I think the key thing to this is to ask the question, what is, what's common here? And really it comes down to what's common is these are all reliable. We go, then, we go there to get answers. Uh, we also go there to interact with others, that engagement piece. So when you are thinking through your mobile strategy, I think um, it's always good to look at, okay, what do I use on a daily basis um, and uh, why am I going there? That's what I want to execute for my participants. I want to have a mobile strategy that's reliable and I want them to have um, you know, a solution at the end of the day. What problems are we going to solve for our participants at the end of the day? So kind of moving forward to that, uh, I think it kind of goes along to understanding Sally, Sally's uh, problems, what she was trying to solve when she actually was uh, looking to implement a mobile strategy. So Sally, following uh, your participants coming to your website, following that window shopping, um, and they've you know registered for your for your events or whatnot. What what's really the, the action you want them to take at the end of the day? We have some actions that are um, easy, and some that um, take a little more work. And uh, the the mobile app helps some of the take a little more work type. Um, we want to always be raising awareness because that is our initial uh, mission and part of that is just social sharing, getting the word out in whatever way possible and then we want people to use their networks um, to fundraise and so the, the mobile app can really, um, can really help that um, in all the situations because you're able to, to post to your social media straight from the, from the app as well as send your, your page out. Um, you can also use the app to recruit team members and get other people involved. And for Carry the Load, we don't have any kind of registration fee. So we want people just to recruit and recruit and recruit and just get more people involved and uh, get them to register so that we can show some impact um, to our sponsors and, and to our donors. Um, we want them to personalize their story. There's no reason uh, for them to get involved if it's, if it's not anything personal to them. They, we want to know, and our tagline is, who are you carrying? So we ask each person who registers, who are you carrying? 
And sometimes people don't really know exactly somebody they want to carry, and we have a full website where we show people that have uh, fallen, died in, in the line of duty, and they can choose one of those people to carry. Um, some people carry uh, just a general group. And so we're basically saying, pick somebody, tell us who you're carrying, and then get the word out there with your own personal story and picture. And then, of course, the um, along with that page is a donate button. And so as they're sharing their story, their networks can then donate to the cause. The key thing for us, since we have all the events going on at the same time, was how do we get, allow people to toggle across more than one event? Because you could be registered for the national relay coming in from the East Coast, but you may also want to register in Dallas. So it allows people to post and uh, share from whichever um, event they want to because they can toggle across any of the events that they are registered for. So following, um, you know, then coming to your website and taking some actions, um, you know, how has mobile helped solve some of these challenges that you had kind of spoken about before? Well, the main thing is the quick access. Um, just being able to get straight to your own event. We always have um, an argument uh, about balance when it comes to the website because <laughs> if you have a website that tells people about who you are and then you have a, a or you could have a website that is only about participants, you're going to exclude somebody. So if we gear our website to learning about us, and then if they download the mobile app, and that's more about just the participants. It's not so much about learning who we are. We're hoping that during the window shopping phase, you figured out who we are, and now the mobile app is going to help you do all of the actions. Um, and some of the actions that uh, may, are made easier with the mobile app is an easy thank you. When somebody donates to you, you can quickly thank them in real time uh, using the mobile app. You can use all your different social media ch uh, channels as well as text and email um, without having to, to switch back and forth with, between a lot of those things on the website. And then you get real-time feedback of how is your team doing, how is the fundraising, and who's on your team. You can also send messages just to your team through the mobile app. And if you get your whole team to download the mobile app and start using it, you can easily communicate with them. And then the, uh, there's a thing called the global feed. And a lot of times people are just sharing what they are sharing on their own social media, and they're putting it in the global feed. But another thing that can be done in the global feed is just to give each other ideas. Here's what I did. I did this you know, car wash or whatever I'm going to do. And I took pictures of it and, and pass along those ideas to other users. And then we also have on the mobile app a feature, well, all of the Raise More um, apps will have this, is a guest entrance. And so in some ways, it does allow a little bit for window shopping. They could see, if they're not registered for any event, they could go in as a guest and see all of the different events that are available. And um, so it is a little bit of a window shopping uh, experience for people who have not registered. But hopefully it encourages them to go ahead and get registered and pick an event from there and, and register from there. Great. Um, so really, now that uh, we've kind of talked through um, some challenges, uh, we've talked through, through you know, really looking at um, you know, what are the problems that you want to solve through a mobile strategy? At the end of the day, you go and you um, create this mobile strategy, you execute it, then what do you do? Um, you just hope everyone downloads it um, and everything like that. So what I thought we could do is potentially talk a little bit about how would you even market an application. Um, and so this is really going into some of our marketing best practices that we provide to um, our clients. So we'll kind of give you a little bit of insight into what we educate our clients on, on how to actually launch your mobile strategy and how would you launch your mobile app. So 
So as uh, Sally was mentioning, um, you know, we do have a global feed for our clients, um, but it's all about making sure you have that buy-in from your entire organization. Um, and so you want to lead by an example. Um, you want to make sure you get your volunteers, your team captains on board. So as you're going through the review process and everything like that, you want to then start to get your cheerleaders involved. And you want them to come into the mobile application and post photos um, and really make sure you have content within your mobile application. So um, again, one of our best, our best kind of practice here is once you've launched the mobile application, now it's time to get traction. And the best way to get traction is to make sure you have buy-in uh, within the, the organization and get those team captains on board. Uh, the next thing here is also, all right, so your app is live. Um, now what? Uh, now being able to market your application. So what you've done is um, it's live. It's ready to go. You have great content in there, so when someone comes in, uh, they feel very welcome into the mobile application. And now it's marketing it. Uh, so these are various different places that you that we suggest you marketing that. Um, participant Center homepage, if you're using TeamRaiser. Um, website, so something I think Carrie the Load has done a great job with their homepage, right, their website. Front and center is um, a banner about the mobile application. Um, the other thing that we do highly recommend is making sure that you're talking about the mobile application in your social networks. Um, making sure people understand that it's available. Um, and then obviously you guys do a great job of doing uh, coaching emails and having auto responders making sure you have that announcement in there, um, specifically with the um, Apple icon and then also the uh, Google Play store. So obviously I think we all know that once there's a pretty picture there, our eyes tend to go there and make sure you're giving them the right link. And then if anyone you know has a tech store or um, campaign that they're using, that would be a very good avenue to start to encourage uh, downloading the mobile application. The other thing that we do um, is we provide templates. So something that we're providing here today that for everyone that's on the call, uh, you can actually come to this uh, URL here and actually see a few marketing templates that we provide to our clients. So one of the things here is, you know, it's a starting point. It's always nice to have a starting point um, of how you should actually visually market your mobile application. Um, so what we provide is kind of a template here, and then you can add your colors, your logo, and everything like that. Um, so we are all about giving you a great starting point where then you can make it your own and then start marketing that. So lastly, I think this is kind of our last marketing um, best practice. So coaching in the app. Obviously, um, you know, we highly encourage the organization, um, obviously those champions to go in there and start to, to coach. Um, with the mobile application, you obviously have additional networks that you can um, use or have your participants to ask for donations through those networks. So we all know a pretty picture, um, you know, drives people to take an action. So we encourage you to use that feed in the mobile application to guide some coaching. Whether that is, you know, sending them some optimal posting time for a particular network. Um, actually showing them a picture of, um, you know, using your text message. So going back to Sally's comment of contact kind of being a barrier at times, um, you know, actually just showing them that, yes, text message is a very good avenue and it's very easy to do. The other thing to note, um, just some kind of data to note here is 
um, you know, email. There's a lot of people that move around, a lot of different organizations, or even, you know, they move from work from one workplace to the other. On average, you change your email about every two years. But for a phone number, you really don't change your phone number, but maybe once a decade. So that is something to note, um, you know, really encouraging people to potentially use text message, knowing that hopefully they won't get a uh, autoresponder that this person's no longer at this, um, at this email. Um, the other thing that I did want to briefly go over is, um, you know, having the various different channels uh, through a mobile strategy, um, you know, being able to say, hey, today is a great day to potentially tweet um, or to potentially post on LinkedIn. So giving them that specific time frame and encouraging people to potentially think about that channel. Have you done that lately? Have you even tried it? Um, so these are just good coaching suggestions that we provide our clients and we thought it would be useful for everyone on the call to, to potentially have in your back pocket, um, especially you know different specific posting times, triggering people to try new things and everything like that. So Sally, um, tell us a little bit about, you've implemented a mobile strategy. Um, you identified some challenges. You wanted to um, overcome some of those challenges. Give us a few takeaways. What would you tell our listeners today? Um, you know, okay. Well, in general, it's almost like when you, uh, are putting together a speech. It's all about understanding your audience and knowing who your constituents are. Um, are they um, people who are uh, young people mostly, older people mostly, tech savvy, not tech savvy? I mean, it's really about who are your who are your constituents. And then with Carry the Load, we tend to have uh, young professionals as a huge uh, portion of our constituents and families, and um, most are very tech savvy, which really helps us um, easily decide that a mobile strategy is worthwhile. And um, we also uh, know that the donors are not necessarily the same as the participants. Um, now, many participants are donors, but for the majority, um, a lot of the donors are going to be not as tech savvy. And so we want to make sure we have this great tool in the per, in the hands of, of our participants, our registered participants, so they can get that out to their networks. Um, you need to understand the challenges that you're trying to solve. So there may be a situation where your constituents are not going to be tech savvy, are not going to be smartphone holders. I can't think of many situations where that would be the case, but um, for the most part, to make your peer-to-peer -peer event a success, it's about understanding who they are and what they need. And mainly, we have to reduce the learning curve time, uh, the time frame that they are getting a, adopting this new way. And you want to reduce that to give them the tools to um, be able to fundraise easily and get up to speed 0 to 60 in, in no time flat. Reducing it from taking a year to hopefully just same in the same uh, session online to make them both a participant and an active fundraiser. All right. Well, um, so kind of our closing tidbits uh, for today, which I think we are um, probably right on time here. Obviously, I guess I'll do a little bit of a plug, raise more. Um, I do have other things that we can talk about um, as well, so hang tight here. Um, so obviously, um, we've talked a little bit about, about raise more, but we do have a promotion going on right now that you can try out raise more for free um, for three events. So feel free to go to our website. Uh, feel free to go and build your own app. 
um, try it out, test drive it, and you obviously can contact us at contact at Raise More. And let me say one more thing that I don't think we really made it completely clear, but um, with Carry the Load, we are using um, Luminate Team Razor for all of our events, and so there's nothing new that we have to create beyond just going to Raise More, putting in the uh, graphics that we need because it completely integrates with Team Razor. So that's a big plus. Great. Thanks, Alan. All right. To kind of give you guys a few other mobile um, applications that you guys should look into as well is a few sidekicks that we use here at Raise More. I thought um, you, any nonprofit could use these as well. So as I mentioned, um, Slack is something that we use here um, at Raise More. I would encourage any nonprofit to look into this. Um, they are not paying me to pay this, um, but it, it is really a great tool for team communication. It will reduce the number of meetings and emails you get. It is free. So I would certainly look into Slack. Uh, the other thing that we have been, um, or at least John and Seth uh, here at Raise More have enjoyed using is Crowdfire. Um, it is a social media engagement app. It really allows you to find and connect with your target audience. So maybe there's some new nonprofits out there that are really trying to, to get their um, following up and everything like that. I would encourage you to look into Crowdfire. The other application out there is called IF. Um, I'm sure you guys have all heard of IF-THEN statements. Uh, this is a great tool where if you want to, um, you know, systemize something, so every time you post to Instagram, you want it to actually uh, post into a Dropbox folder. You can set that up, and it would automatically work. Um, anytime that you want to uh, post to Facebook, you want it to also post to Twitter. You can set that up as well. So I would very much encourage maybe your social or media marketing team uh, to look into that. And then some fun things that Instagram has currently uh, put out that we've been using is Hyperlapse and Boomerang. Just some fun little tools that everyone should kind of look at since we're talking about mobile. And uh, so I would kind of give you some insight into those as well. So now I think we are ready for some questions. Andy, I'll pass it off to you. Yes, thanks, ladies. That fantastic con content, and just love the perspective of how you learned from things along the way, and how you put some of the things you learned into practice, uh, both using the app and then also in the marketing prospect. So, We've got some good questions that have come in, and I'll encourage people to send in more. Uh, we'll try to get to as many as we can today, and if we don't uh, get to yours, uh, we'll be able to get to you offline and answer your question um, in a bit of a more one-on-one -on -one basis. So with that, um, I'm going to kind of put a couple things together. We've had a couple of themes kind of emerge, so we'll start with those questions. And the first is, how do you suggest getting buy-in from your organization? Um, to make a mobile piece of your strategy an integral part of your peer-to-peer -peer program. Yeah, so I will start off and then I'll let Sally uh, go for that. So, you know, getting buy-in, I think number one is really talking to them about the challenges that you're facing. So Sally gets to take all those phone calls mm -hmm. sometimes, <laughs> and so she so she obviously had, um, you know, specific challenges that she wanted to reduce on her plate. Uh, so making sure that your that your organization understands fully what challenges um, are happening today, and then how um, this mobile strategy can. Act fulfill that. I think handing it local to you, being able to test drive different things, um, I think is another key thing. And really, there's no substitute for just showing people what it looks like and actually going ahead and getting a sample, getting a sample mobile app, 
and showing the staff and giving them the run through of exactly what it can do for them because sometimes you know in any organization and we're in Cherry the Lotus is a very very small staff we can have a meeting in a very small conference room um, it's really about everybody has an interest of their own section of the company and so you have to of course point out how it helps them also but really once you see it in action it's so cool that people like that coolness factor no matter what department they're in. <laughs> Fantastic. The mobile is cool and it's becoming more and more cool. People are jumping on it and I loved how you talked about driving action um, through the app and it's so easy and present for people. Um, and we talked a little bit about the marketing but could you kind of expand a little bit and talk about what you feel the most important piece or pieces are to securing app adoption in your different populations and maybe if there is a difference across the population from the registered fundraisers to the attendees and um, speak to how you uh, market to them maybe differently. Yeah, I think one of the things from my perspective and then I'll let Sally um, is visual, right? Um, anytime that you're able to take a screenshot of a potential function that could help your participants, that is a very easy way to coach them of, you know, hey, have you even tried this? Um, it's this simple. Just look at the image and make sure you downloaded the, the application. So I think visually making sure that you are advertising the functionality of uh, the mobile application or whatever mobile strategy you're doing is very key. So um, they don't have to read a lot of text, right? People don't like to read anymore. Uh, they want a pretty picture and three steps, and that's it. And for us, Drew, you caught us right at our ramp-up time. This is when everything gets crazy, but we're seeing a real difference of who is posting now and what we think is going to happen over the next month. And right now, most of our mobile app posts have to do with fundraising. People are sharing their page on their social networks. They're sharing out their donation forms. And as we move along, it's going to start being a little more about the stories of who you're carrying. That's what we really want to ramp up over the next month. We have so many channels now available to people of how they can share their stories that we want to start really pushing that in the mobile app now. And I think that that's going to be the difference of the types of constituents that are downloading and using the mobile app because right now it's really people who have always been raising money for us and now they just see that this is an easier tool and, and that they can continue to raise money. And so our next push is to really get the people who've never raised money to just at least tell their story on the mobile app using a picture, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yep, keep it visual, exactly. Um, so you mentioned that uh, this happens to be tied into the Team Razor platform that you use. What type of information comes back from the mobile app into the Team Razor application? Yeah, so um, that's something with the dashboard. So just really being able to understand who's active in the mobile application, um, what have they done in the mobile application is something that we provide through our dashboard um, and, and really the functionality of, uh, uh, of, of the dashboard is allowing any organization to go in there and turn on and off different events. Uh, so for right now, Sally has, what, 32? 32, 32 um, all active, all running, um, all across one mobile application. And so that really allows any participant that comes in um, you know, they actually log in, they only log in once, right? And so for, for Sally's event, you know, you could actually be registered for your relay, the Dallas event, and then potentially even another rally. A rally. And so being able to toggle back and forth on those three that you're registered for and fundraise. And of course, it's pulling across um, both platforms. Of um, it's keeping up with how much money you're raising and who has donated to you. So all of that goes back and forth uh, between Team Razor and the mobile app. Um, what else? The the actual 
picture that you upload to the mobile app for your profile is the one that will show on your online personal fundraising page. So I don't know if that was clear earlier. So you know, a lot of times people have trouble when they're uploading their photo to their personal fundraising page. I get calls all the time if people don't, don't understand how to do that, but they might be able to do it easier on their phone because they're used to doing it in other apps. And so that's another thing that goes across. And if you update your story in the mobile app, it shows on your personal page online. Okay. So we do have a push-pull. Um, so anything that you update in the mobile application will be updated in uh, your participant center. Fantastic. Um, the next question I think falls into the category of it's a good problem to have, <laughs> uh, but certainly something that we want to be very cognizant of because um, Sally and Devin, you both talked about the importance of coaching the users of the mobile app. And this question is, how do you coach your overzealous volunteers and team captains to not post too much and oversource their feeds? Um, this organization has seen this. And they feel like it might even cause people to tune out when a person or people from a team are dominating that conversation. So, um, yeah, how do you kind of rein in your really overzealous folks? Yeah, so one, that is a very touchy subject, I would say. Uh, one, one feature that we have in our dashboard is you can actually communicate to your participants through our dashboard. And it shows in the notifications of the mobile app. Right. And so that is where we would encourage the organization to send a very polite little message and, you know, saying thank you so much for being such a champion for us. For us. Hopefully they're on a team. And that's where you could really encourage them to not go from the global feed and all the time and really taking all that up all the time to really going into their team feed. Um, and so basically it's education and being polite and how you can communicate to that person saying, we love this content and everything like that, uh, but did you know about the team communication channel? This is where you can fill this up all day, every day. <laughs> Great feedback because they are really amateurs in this. You know, we're trying to encourage them and bring them along to be um, real marketers and, and create their own fundraising uh, and marketing program. So uh, and another, I, I another love, piece, oh, go ahead. Another piece of the education on that is when you're in the mobile app, you can share to your social network and then just unclick the global feed. And so you may need to tell that person when you're sharing, don't always use the global feed because the, it, you can always still share to your own social networks without including the global feed. Great feedback. Um, we've got about three minutes to go and we've got a couple more questions we'll try to get in here. Um, but if you had to give some advice uh, as they look at adopting a strategy and putting some tactics in place, what would you suggest the first step to be to somebody in that situation to begin to build and execute a mobile strategy? The first, I would say, is understanding what's available. Um, what is available out in the market today? Um, you know, what is your budget? And is your organization 100% um, bought in? Um, if they're not 100% bought in, uh, that's when, you know, you would want to try to find something that you can prove to them that there's value here, um, trying things out. Um, but I would say if you don't have your organization 100% bought in, um, that's where you're not going to see that full adoption because you need your social network to, you know, your community or your organization department there to really help you publish there, making sure your autoresponders and everything have been updated. Um, Sally gets to own a lot of that herself, but, but when you're a much bigger organization, you want to make sure you have 100% buy-in. Fantastic. Um, we've talked a little bit about the integration between the Raise More mobile app and Team Razor, but uh, I know we've got a, a wide variety of folks on the phone. Um, Devin, what other applications does Raise More integrate with? 
Currently, uh, we are working on other uh, with other integrations, but um, as of today, our only integration is TeamRaiser. But Great. some are coming soon. Great. Um, and then just for some materials, um, Devin, what's the best way to, to learn a little bit more specifically about the Raise More app? Is there some materials online or places they can go, videos they could watch? Yes. So I will go to this slide here. Um, so we do have some funny videos. Um, and mm -hmm. I will actually play a video at the very end here uh, that's about a two minutes long. Um, if people want to stay on, if not, you can jump right off. But um, again, contact at Raise More if you want to have any follow-up conversations with us. Go to our website, raisemore.com. Uh, that's where you can actually go and sign up for our promotion or even just try us out. And then um, Vimeo, um, you can actually check out some of our videos. All of this is on our raisemore.com. But uh, at the very end here, I will, um, I can show a video here um, that does a little bit of a um, funny demo if you want to stay on. Great. And while Devin's queuing that up, um, thanks everybody for joining today. Um, Sally and Devin have really given us a great overview of how to really bring mobile into your overall peer-to-peer -peer strategy with some great tips and tricks. Um, just one note as she loads it up, uh, for those of you who are going to participate in the next session, uh, you will need to close out of this instance um, and log back in using the link and dial in number that you received in the email after you registered. So um, Devin, uh, thanks very much. Sally, thank you. And here's the video. Thank you. All right, thanks. To the point. There's no shortage of passion coming from CJ, but there is a shortage of efficiency. You see, fundraising is a hard job. And while CJ can reach this guy, no problem, it's this woman who makes all the difference. Leave me alone. The key for CJ is keeping up with the latest technology. As the world gets increasingly mobile, having a mobile event fundraising app is merely a pipe dream for CJ, with most custom app shops charging anywhere from twenty to sixty thousand dollars. Oh, I don't have that kind of money. Exactly. Nonprofits experience a 42% increase in donations from mobile devices. Yet only a quarter have a mobile application because app implementations are expensive, inefficient, and lack the power of data behind them, making them flat out impractical. Plus, I want my app to get me like my girl does. That's where we come in. Who are you? We're Raisemore, and we're here to help you. You want a way for your participants to engage and raise money for the catwalk, <laughs> right? With our online store, you can build your own customized app in a few minutes at a low cost to make your participants' fundraising efforts simple by putting the right tools in the palm of their hands. We then provide you insight on your fundraiser's performance and a channel to help you coach participants. It's so easy, even CJ can use it. Think of the cat! First, sign up on our website. You will then be directed to our online store to customize your app. Choose your colors, upload a logo and graphics, set message templates for participants to use when asking for donations and recruiting team members. Then write your app description, which will be displayed in the Apple and Google Store. Review and submit. Oh, this app is better than my girl does. Yep. Yay. Participants then download the app where they can view their fundraising goals in progress, communicate with their team members, and send out donation links through a text, email, or post on different social channels. Pull through for cat. Act the app. Organizations can then access the data in real time through our dashboard to understand who is driving the most reach, send the right coaching messages to the right participants, and better help them tap into their social networks to raise more. Call out Johnny, Tyler, and Amanda for the Kitty Litter Challenge. See you guys next week at the catwalk. Not only is CJ now reaching his quarter, but he's turned this woman into a passionate advocate for culture for cats, helping his organization pull off the best fundraising event ever. And let's be honest, if Raise More can help cold brew for cats pull off a successful fundraising event, there's no doubt we can assist you with your very own mobile fundraising app. So check us out at RaiseMore.com, and together we can raise more. Get it? I love it, Devin. That's... Nope. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> That, that is a lot of fun, and I think it really speaks so well to um, the approach that you all have to this. Uh, we know that fundraising is hard, but we really work to make it fun and engage 
our participants and our supporters in a way that they can maximize their efforts. So I just want to express my thanks again to both of you um, for sharing all you've learned in your insights. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks.